Hi everyone, Mark here from AmericanNarration.com with today's pond Q&A of the day. The question today is, can pond aeration help reduce phosphorus? The answer to that is yes, and in a moment we'll talk about how. But first, let's cover why you would want to reduce phosphorus in the per first place. Why is phosphorus reduction that important? And I can sum the answer up with one word, algae. Phosphorus is a primary driver of algae blooms, and when you are able to reduce it in a pond environment, you can often limit or reduce or even eliminate algae blooms from happening. But it's important that you consider phosphorus and nitrogen as the two primary drivers of algae. When we talk about aeration, there are different types of aerators used in ponds. There are surface-based fountains and aerators, and then there is a bottom-based type of aeration system as pictured here. When we're trying to improve a pond environment, particularly of algae, it's not to say that a fountain aerator would not have an effect, but if the pond has much depth to it, uh, keep in mind that surface-based aeration will only affect, say, four to six feet down in most cases, if the pond is deeper than that, you may not increase oxygen that much using something from the surface. So in most cases, we'll look at diffused bottom-based aeration. This is made up of a land-based pump. It has some airline that connects to a diffuser that sits at the bottom of the pond. This diffuser will have a membrane on it where air is pushed through it, creating these very fine micro bubbles. These bubbles rise to the surface break the water tension at the surface and allow oxygen to come in from the atmosphere. And then along with that, it also will force this oxygenated water down to the bottom of the pond. It circulates it and mixes it very well from top to bottom. So you increase oxygen levels from the top of the pond all the way to the very bottom. And it's very effective at maintaining good oxygen levels throughout the water body. This is important because by increasing dissolved oxygen levels in a pond, aerobic conditions are promoted. This is higher oxygen uh, conditions are promoted. These support beneficial bacteria that are primarily aerobic and they thrive in these kind of conditions. These are nature's pond cleaners, the pond cleaning mechanisms that nature uses to break down organic material to help consume phosphorus nitrogen to outcompete algae for such nutrients and when those bacteria are thriving you tend to have a much cleaner healthier ecosystem that stays cleaner longer over a number of years these bacteria are naturally occurring but they also may be supplemented in in certain cases with commercial products that help support this much like a probiotic would be used by uh, you and i in well oxygenated water, iron and other minerals can also react to phosphorus and it forms an insoluble compound or encapsulate the phosphorus to precipitate it out of the water. This effectively removes phosphorus from the water column and in doing that it prevents algae from utilizing it as fuel. In anaerobic conditions or a environment that's lacking in oxygen, phosphorus can actually be released from the sediment at the bottom of the pond. And when oxygen levels are improved, then this release is minimized or slowed, and in some cases even reversed to where you can actually start locking up the phosphorus uh, at the bottom of the pond. The other tool that may be used in some cases is called a uh, phosphorus binder or a phosphate binder. These are products which are produced to help in a similar way attach to the phosphorus molecule and encapsulate it or make it clump together and then like many binders it will basically create a, uh, a compound again where it gets so heavy that it's pulled to the very bottom of the pond and in effect sequestered down there. And so however you can get the phosphorus out of the water column through aeration alone or in combination with some kind of binder, it typically will help manage algae issues just simply by doing that. It's not a, not a slam dunk, but it's moving the pond in a much better direction when you can do that. Higher oxygen levels supported by aeration can also promote the growth of beneficial plants. 
and things like diatoms, for example, which are generally per highly preferable compared to something like a blue-green algae, which could be toxic. There are many microorganisms in the pond that actually can utilize some of these nutrients for fuel and sustenance. And these microorganisms are actually also utilized by fish, and they, they represent a very healthy environment, not only for the balance of the pond, but for the inhabitants of the pond as well. And aeration typically supports all of that very well. Phosphorus, as I mentioned, is a key driver of most algae blooms. And when you reduce phosphorus levels, algae will also often go down or be mitigated or be prevented in some cases. The interesting thing is that when algae starts, when it blooms, it and let's say you have no aeration in the pond at all, it actually can pull oxygen from the water. It can deplete oxygen, which is one of the reasons you often find fish kills in ponds during hot weather that have very large algae blooms. Algae or any plant, as it goes through its daily life cycle, can actually increase some oxygen during the day, but pull oxygen at night, and in times, make oxygen crashes occur. But What's interesting is when algae does pull oxygen from the water, it can precipitate the release of phosphorus from the sediments, thereby sustaining its life cycle. I find that very fascinating. It's not such great news for a pond owner, but it is interesting to know and recognize this process. Aeration devices that increase dissolved oxygen off often help with mixing the water as well. As I stated before, surface-based aerators and fountains do mix a bit, but it's very limited at the surface. A bottom-based diffused system like we profiled earlier will mix the entire water body from top to bottom. And as you increase oxygen, especially down at the bottom, you can limit the release of these nutrients from the sediment in the pond, and that's just very, very helpful. It also allows fish to utilize the entire water body rather than just a very limited layer of oxygen-rich water, let's say, in an unaerated pond, if there is such a thing. Oftentimes, that's very close to the surface, very limited, and the hotter the weather gets, the more limited that oxygen availability becomes. And so aeration helps, uh, especially during very uh, stressful times of high summer heat, and along with that, you get improved mitigation of phosphorus and nitrogen as well. The increased dissolved oxygen promotes the growth of aerobic bacteria that will pull or incorporate phosphorus into their cells. Now, these bacteria, like all living things, will eventually die, but when they die, they take that phosphorus with them, and it is still not available for algae to utilize. So, in summary, we come at this from a number of different angles, but increasing the dissolved oxygen levels in a pond helps with phosphorus reduction by promoting aerobic conditions that phosphor chemical reactions to lock phosphorus in the sediment. It encourages the biological uptake of phosphorus by microbes, preventing algae blooms through this nutrient mitigation, and improving overall water quality and circulation through the aeration. This multifaceted approach to managing phosphorus levels makes proper aeration a very important tool in maintaining healthy pond ecosystems. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about pond aeration at all or anything with your pond in general, feel free to reach out to us at AmericanAeration.com. We're happy to help and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.